Hi, my name is Andrew and I'm the Workshop Coordinator here at TraumaSim. I have a hand in the development and construction of all of our products as well as managing our materials and equipment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use our hemorrhage control simulator, known in-house as Tintin. This video provides a general overview of the simulator's functions and should not be used as a substitute for accredited training. As always, follow your organization's protocols. When you buy this unit, it comes complete with the following. The control simulator itself, a 5 litre pressure pump, connective hoses and taps pre-assembled, red food colouring, laminated instructions, and the rigid space case it was shipped in. To set up for use, you'll also need the following. An emergency application tourniquet for the amputated leg, a junctional tourniquet if you're using one for the groin wound, packing gauze for the lateral leg wound, and plastic sheeting if you're using the HCS indoors. Begin by positioning your hemorrhage control simulator on the edge of a table. If operating indoors, be sure to cover any surfaces you want to stay dry with drop sheets. Fill the pressure pump to the maximum fill line, then pour in the food colouring. Close the pump and shake to mix. Connect the 8mm tap to the pressure pump. Connect your HCS to the three 6mm taps. The tubes emitting from the rear of the HCS running left to right are for the amputated leg, the junctional groin wound, and the lateral leg wound. Ensure these taps are set to the off position. Check all connections are secure. If you need to disassemble the tubing, simply press the appropriate release collar and pull the tubing free. Bring your pump up to pressure. A full five liter pump should only need five compressions. Switch the eight millimeter tap to the on position. Switch the appropriate six millimeter tap to the on position. You can run the wounds individually to focus on treating a single injury or run multiple at a time to increase the stress for your trainees. Here, I'll be running the wounds one at a time, from left to right. For the junctional wounds, you may want to only turn the taps on a quarter to avoid overspray. Apply your choice of tourniquet to the amputated leg. Bleeding should be reduced within two to four twists, at which point turn the tap off. If you're using a junctional tourniquet, it can be applied directly above the groin wound. Once bleeding is reduced, turn the tap off. This wound can also be used as a packing trainer if you are not using a junctional tourniquet. For the lateral leg wound, scoop out any built up blood and feel for the source of the bleed. Apply pressure directly to the source, then pack with gauze. Since we're using coloured water, flow will not stop completely. Once bleeding is reduced, turn the tap off. Now I'm going to go through a couple things to avoid doing. Do not continue raising the pressure once the tourniquet has been properly applied and do not saw the HCS in such a way as to impair or damage the tubing. Once you're done using the hemorrhage control simulator, it should be cleaned. Empty the pressure pump, rinse it out and fill it with water. Reconnect the pump to the HCS and run it until the flow is clear. Wipe the simulator down to remove any remaining blood. We also recommend running pressurized air through the system. This helps avoid internal moisture buildup. Allow the hemorrhage control simulator time to dry before packing it away. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information or to book an online demonstration, please visit our website.